we're still looking at the incredible development of Jesus as a little boy. We're in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. And just to remind you, Jesus' mother and father, uh, Joseph and Mary, had taken him to Jerusalem. Uh, he had gone to the temple, and they left and were on their way back to Nazareth, only to discover that night that Jesus, their son, was not with them. And they turned around and went back, and they found Jesus at the temple, talking to the scribes and the teachers of the law. We've looked at what that teaches us about Joseph and Mary's parents. If you missed that session, go back and listen to the last episode. But I want to focus today on what this teaches us about Jesus as a person. We tend to forget sometimes that Jesus was a baby. He taught like a baby. He learned to talk like a normal baby learns to talk. We don't think a lot about the humanity of Jesus, what he was like growing into manhood. We tend to always think of Jesus as either a baby in a manger or as a 30-year-old man, but we don't talk about him and think about him a lot as a child. He's learning to walk, learning to talk, learning to read. One of the miracles that the Bible talks about is that Jesus laid aside some of the attributes of being God for a while as he became a man. One obvious example is, as God, Jesus could be everywhere, all the time, at the same time. But as a man, he's physically limited to being in one place at one time because of a physical body. The book of Philippians chapter 2 says that Jesus, although he was equal with God, gave up his right or prerogative to be God and take on the attributes of God for a while in order to become one of us. He's fully God and he's fully man, but his physical attributes are those of a man. He's fully just like us. That's mind-boggling to me that God could get tired. Reading one of the gospel stories when Jesus has this uh, unforgettable encounter with the woman at the well, the story starts out saying something like this, Jesus being tired sat on the well. That blows my mind. That God who made heaven and earth can get tired and need to sit down and take a rest. But you're looking at the human aspect of the person of Jesus. Understand that he never ceased to be God. But he gave up some of the rights of being God so that he could be man for a while. In other words, he gave up the right to think and talk and had to learn to do those things as a human being. So think about this. What a beautiful thing that Jesus, God's son, went through every struggle growing up that we go through. Jesus had to learn to read and to write. Imagine teaching that to your toddler and your elementary school kid and your first grader. Honey, Jesus had to do this. But there was a growing awareness inside of Jesus as he grew of who he was. Wouldn't you have liked to have been a fly on the wall when Mary began to tell Jesus how he was born? How the angel came to her and announced that she would be carrying a child. I can see the little boy, Jesus, soaking it all in as a little boy. You think our kids get enamored with the stories we tell them. Can you imagine Mary saying, let me tell you how I found out I was going to have you. So here he is this day as a young boy, probably around 12 or 13 sitting in the temple with the scholars, and he's listening to all they have to say. He has an insatiable thirst for spiritual knowledge. And they would talk, and he would ask questions that 12-year-olds don't ask. Now, don't try to make him a man yet. He's still a boy, still probably 12 or 13. And at this point, he's not the teacher. They still are. Although he boggles their mind 
with what he does know because he's answering things 12 year olds don't answer maybe they're sitting there discussing Isaiah 7:14 where the bible says and a virgin will conceive a child and his name shall be called Emmanuel and in this 12 year old's mind he's thinking that's mama the virgin who's going to conceive with a child without any physical sexual relationships that's mama dad is my stepdad he's not my physical dad my mom was a virgin when she had me and that's me called Emmanuel it means I'm God with these people that's me and again there's a growing awareness of who he is as a person and what he's called to do so it shouldn't be a surprise when he's thinking through these things that Mary and Joseph come to him and Mary says to him, Jesus, where have you been? What have you done? Your father and I have been looking for you. And he turns to Mary and says, don't you know that I've got to be in my father's house? It's almost like there's a play on words between your father and I have been looking and I'm in my father's house. As it's dawning upon him that his real father is God, his father. Again, there's a growing awareness in his mind of who his real father was, his heavenly father. Now, I point all of this out just so we learn the process that Jesus went through. But I also point this out because all of us go through a similar process. All of us go through a growing awareness of who we are and what God wants to do in our lives. None of us are Jesus. None of us are called to the same tact, role, and responsibility that Jesus was called to. But we are to be Christians, Christians, little Christ, like Christ. And at every stage of our spiritual development, we're learning more and more what God called us to be. Who I am, not just as Jack Millwood, but who I am in Christ what my responsibilities are, what my options are. At every age of my life in development, I am learning what God called me to be. And I'm having to learn to submit to Him every day on a new basis. So as we look at this story, let me ask you, where are you in your own personal pilgrimage, your own spiritual development? Are you coming to more of an understanding of who God is and who you are in God? Are you learning more about what God created you to be, what your spiritual shape, skills, hearts, abilities, personality, experiences are? Are you a growing, maturing Christian, developing? Are you at still at the same point spiritually that you were five years ago? If we're not moving closer to Christ, we're moving away from Christ. We're what the old timers used to call backsliding. We're moving in the wrong direction. So what we learn from Jesus here is that we too ought to be growing in our awareness of God's plan and purpose for our life. This story not only reveals to us what his parents are like, but it reveals to us what Jesus as a person is like, and it also stimulates us to ask, am I growing as a person, and in my role and relationship to God and what he's called me to be? There's also something, also something to learn in this story about becoming aware of his presence in our life. We'll look at that in our next episode. Stay tuned.